Oh, hi everybody, it's Mikey here from thecrochetcrowd.com. Today's tutorial, we're going to do the Bernat Blanket Big Wheel. Yes, I'm just kind of tucked under my blanket right now, doing a little bit of light reading, and I'm going to show you how to do this pattern next. Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Bernat Blanket Big Wheel and this is what you see here. This is a generous size afghan. It's 50 inches by 60 inches and this is using the that really big fat balls that you see here and this is Bernat Blanket Yarn. So in this particular afghan there are two colors and you'll need three balls of each of the two colors. But I almost want to make a, an assumption here and this is just an assumption. I think if you wanted three colors you could probably do two balls of three colors instead of just um, two colors and make it six balls. That, does that make sense? That makes sense to me. So in today's pattern I'm going to show you the ins and outs. Now I wanted to tell you something a little bit more about this concept right now. Going back about seven years ago I decided to make an afghan very similar to this and this is before the yarn companies came out with all this big thick and bulky yarn. Thick and bulky right now but lightweight is also in trend right now but seven years ago you know virtually nobody had it on the market. So about seven years ago I made a similar concept to this and I thickened it up and I used five strands of thick yarn at one time. So it was actually kind of like a chunky yarn but it wasn't bulky like this. And I decided I was going to do it and I was going to commit to it and it actually was 75 yarn balls by the time I was done. But to my disappointment is that because I had done it that way when I got to the end I realized that the afghan was so heavy that literally it on top of you felt like you were being smothered. So I love the new yarns of today that you can have the thick and bulkiness that I was trying to get many many years ago but you don't have to have the weight and I'm sure that this is much warmer than my other afghan that I had made. So without further ado what you're going to need today is the following. Let's quickly talk about this pattern. So we need a total of six balls complete to make this afghan. The afghan is a total measurement of 50 inches by 60 inches. Now the nice thing about it is that Bernat Blanket and Bernat Baby Blanket are the same kinds of yarn and they're also the same yardage. So if you wanted to do this in a baby blanket and prefer the baby colors of the baby blanket you can do so. And the Bernat Blanket is more geared toward decor and accenting your home so that it has a very different color line to it. Either way you choose you can't go wrong. So with this also we're going to need a size N, a 10 millimeter crochet hook. This is a boy and it has a comfort grip on it and I picked this up at Michael's as well because I prefer that in a hook. But let me talk a little bit more about the pattern because I want to tell you something before we get started. So when we look at the pattern here you're going to notice that there's large round circles. You should notice that the round circles do not finish and end at the same spot. So what's going to happen is that we, we're going to start this. So basically on the other side you see this darker circle on the other side that it finishes as a half circle. And then this for example the white over here um, is a half circle and therefore in the bottom on the other side it's actually a full circle. You're not cutting the yarn in between all of the, the rows. In fact what you are doing is that you can actually see it in this photograph is that the yarn is being carried up on the side. So it's just part of the side. It just it's really kind of hard to tell and instead of cutting your yarn and weaving in the ends each and every time you do a color you can just carry it forward and then that'll save you a lot of time too. So let's get started now. So let's get started. We're going to start off with the slip knot. Now the pattern says to chain 97. So I want you to chain 97. So remember that the first one that you put onto your finger is not one. Okay so that doesn't ever start on one. So we, we start one as soon as we start the first one. So you want to do a total of 97. So you just row boat back or so just yarn over and pull through. So one, two, three, four, and five and go all the way to 97. My sample on screen today is going to be much smaller just to show you because everything in between the, the, the edges are basically the same and once I show you how to do the middle part you can get that all the way across. So please go all the way to 97. So let's move on to row number one and even though my sample is smaller I'm still following the instructions as stated. So it says to do one single crochet second chain from the hook so you just count back one and go back to the two and what I like to do is just turn it over and get the back uh, loop or the back hump of the stitch and just single crochet back there. Okay once you do that once um, it'll turn over that chain so all of the chain will appear upside down. You'll have a better finishing edge when you go to do that. It says to do one single crochet into the next chain. 
So do that. So here's where we're going to start doing um, the shell uh, stitches and let's begin to do that next. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to skip over the next three chains. So just count the back loops. So you see one, two, three and go to the fourth and you wanna put seven double crochets into that fourth one over there. So the fourth chain and do seven. So let's count this out together. So one double crochet and two We have three, we have four, five, we have six and seven. So now that we have our seven in we simply just come back to onto the chain and skip over four. So one, two, three. So let me just make sure I'm looking at the back. So one, two, three and go to the fourth and go to the fourth stitch and single crochet into that stitch plus the next two. So you'll have a total of three single crochets right in a row. The first is always, it's always harder to get started but once you get started it's actually pretty, it's pretty good once you uh, get beyond this point. So you're gonna go all the way down using that same thing. So you're gonna go all the way down. So you're gonna skip the next three and double crochet seven more times into the fourth uh, chain over and then after you get that skip the next three and then uh, single crochet into the next uh, three stitches just like you've seen over here. So once you get to the other side this is what you're going to do is that the other side see how we started off with two single crochets and then around uh, circle is the next. In the other side what happens on this is that we're gonna finish halfway into the middle of the outside. So let's show you how to do that next. So if your chain count is correct what's gonna happen is on the final side you're going to skip over your three. So skip over the three. So one, two, three. You should have one stitch left and this one here instead of putting in seven double crochets you're going to only put in four. You're only doing a half of a circle on the very edge for this particular row. So one and two three and four. Okay, so this is what it should look like at this point. So one side is gonna have a, a, a bit of a, a, a single crochets before the circle and the other side is going to finish off halfway in a circle. So I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to show you how to do this first of changing the color but I do not want you to change your yarn. So don't trim it, just leave it on because we're gonna carry it and I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a sec. When changing colors you're always going to change colors on the same side. So in order to change a color which we're, we have to do at this point is that you need to backtrack one. So just take this stitch out again. So take out the last one. So every time you get to the final one of the double crochets you don't want to finish that stitch all together. So you want a double crochet going in pulling it through and through and once you have two loops on your hook I need you to grab the first one. So you're just going to create a slip knot first to secure the first time and you're going to pull that through. So just put the slip knot on and pull it through. So what's gonna happen is next time we come to blue we're just going to carry it upward instead of actually just um, cutting the yarn and having to weave in the ends. This is so much better and it's a lot faster too. So let's begin the next row. So let's begin our next row. We're gonna turn around and I'm just only gonna grab the green and you can secure the green underneath for the first time so you can actually go right over top of it. Okay, so now that we're ready we're going to chain one and we're gonna put a double, or sorry, a single crochet into the first two double crochets. So just one into each and notice how I have this straggler lying down on top so I can trap it underneath. So I got one and then I put a single crochet into the next double crochet. So there should be two single crochets on the edge. To begin the next part we're going to start the underside of the circle of the wheel. So underside to do that we have to chain three. So one, two, three and we're going to collect seven of the next double crochets that are in a row in order to form that circle. So how we do that is that we just yarn over and we go into the very next one and we pull through and pull through two and hold. We don't finish the stitch and we keep doing this until there's eight loops on this hook. That's how I keep count easily. So yarning over going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. Okay, yarn over, go to the next one, 
pull through, pull through two and hold. Yarn over, going into the next, pull through, pull through two and hold. So now I have a total of five loops on my hook but I want a total of eight so keep on going. Okay, so you can really speed up if you know how to do this stitch. Just take your time and because it is bulky yarn it will go really quickly for you as well. So now I think I have eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. What I do for a visual for myself is that I look at the first and I go boom. Okay, is there's four this way and then is, and then just quickly look. Okay, there's four this way. So it's just a visual thing. Once you have all eight you're gonna yarn over and pull through everything. Just like this. So just take your time pull it through everything that you got and now we're just simply going to chain three. So let's begin to chain three. So one, two and three coming into the very next stitch that's available to you all the way over here and just single crochet into the next three double crochets. So that was one, two and three. So on the very top so that you have the circles that will always be three single crochets by itself and then the middles will fill in just like this and you will go all the way. So if you were to continue with your pattern here you'll chain three again and again collect all your stitches in order to do the underside of the circle. So what's gonna happen is when you get to the other side of this particular one, so this is the other side of the edge, here's what you're going to do. Simply chain three. So one, two and three and you want to collect the next four that are available to you. There's only four available and so this is going to complete a half of a circle. So I've just chained my three so yarn over going into the very next one, pull through, pull through two and hold and going into the next one, yarn over, pull through two and hold and you will end up with five loops on your hook but in actual fact it's only four of these spokes I guess in the big wheel. Once you have your five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through everything. At the end just like that and what do we need to do at this point is that we yarn over and then just pull through to finish off. So that gives you the next center circle for the next time that you wanna go. So because you're on this part of the pattern you don't want to trim your yarn at this point so let's move on to the next part. So let's turn our work and we're going to complete the top side of this big wheel now. So uh, when we go to start we're gonna start off with a half circle. So how we do this to begin is really easy. So I find that the tops are very easy and just the, the ones underneath going around is a little more time consuming but it looks just as fabulous. To begin we're going to chain three which counts as a, a double crochet. So one, two and three and we want to put in three more double crochets into this this spot right here into the center point. The reason for it is that you have one here and you have four spokes down here. Do not include this as a spoke. So you have one, two, three and four. So if you have one double crochet already like represented by the chain three you only need three double crochets to finish that circle off. So do that. So let's do three. Just like that. So once you have your three, this is when you're going to come and work back within the single crochets right here. To do that just stretch on over and just get to the first single crochet and single crochet right over top of it. So right into the stitch so it maintains the pattern. And now we're ready for a next um, circle to go on top. This time and all the ones remaining across there will be full semicircles going all the way over. Let me show you how to do that. Okay so let's begin to do the top semicircles. So then it's just seven double crochets right into the center. So let me show you where that is. Sorry I automatically went in there. So you'll notice that there is um, a round circle. Do you see the string? It's right in there. Okay. It's like uh, it's like the hub. And so you wanna play within this particular spot right there. Okay and there will be seven double crochets into that spot. So let's count those that together. So we got one and two, three, four, you have five, six, and seven. Just like that. 
Okay, so if you were continuing to go all the way straight across, you would be ending up in the next part of this will be the three single crochets right again over top of the ones in below. When you get to the other side, there will only ever be two on this side. So you're just gonna stretch on over and just do one single crochet in the final two. Okay, and you can kind of see how it's working out just like so. So on one side we have the semicircle finishing off as a half and we have our semicircles in the middle and then the side is in the middle just like this. So let's uh, move on. We're gonna switch back to blue and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now that I'm back, I wanna switch back to my blue. So in order to do so, I have to reverse back out of the single crochet. So I wanna show you how to do this um, as if you're not having to change color plus if you have to. So if you're gonna insert in and you're going to single crochet within the final two, you want to drop, just drop it out of the way and grab your blue back up and just use that blue to finish that stitch. And then your blue is then ready to go. So let's start on to the next part. So let's now start this color and we have to create a half underside semicircle just like we did over here. Okay, so the thing about it, here's how we go to start. We're going to chain up three. So one, two, three, like so. And so we wanna collect the next three together to put it together with this one. So we yarn over and we go into the next stitch and double crochet and pull through two and hold. And we wanna do that so a total of three times because we need a total of four of the spokes that involved in a partial semicircle just like this. So you have the three here plus this one which gives you your four. You're gonna yarn over and pull through everything just like this. Okay, so that's how you do your edge and then you chain three. So you already know how to do this. So one, two and three and you come back to the semicircle on the top and the next three stitches to you are going to be a sem are one single crochet each. Just like this. Okay, so this now we're gonna complete a full underside and you know already how to do this again. So remember it's chaining a three. So one, two, three, coming into the next stitch and start collecting them. And you need a total of eight loops on the hook. So yarning over, pulling it through, pull through two and hold. This is when you really can start speeding up because you can see the pattern materializing right before your eyes. You will continue to collect your stitches until you have eight loops on your hook. And you will do this every time you on an underside going all the way across. So as I mentioned already once before, I kinda just put my finger down and say, okay, I see four here and I only see f three in front of my finger so I'm just gonna yarn over and do another one, which makes sense. So I need a total of eight loops. Once you have all eight, you pull through everything just like this and then you're going to chain three. One, two and three. So if you're continuing along the pattern you'll end up doing three single crochets back down on top of the neck of the next green one that you'll run into. But if you're on the very edge which I'm about to do there's only two left. So you're only gonna go into single crocheting the final two. And this maintains that pattern of one side being partial like so and the other side is starting as a as a partial on this side. Okay, see how it changes and it will be very obvious in the next time we go around. So let's turn our work and move up to the next row. To turn up and go to the next row we just simply turn and we're going to chain one and then the first two single crochets are each gonna get one single crochet into it. So now we're on the top side of the wheel and remember what we have to do when we're on the top sides. We do seven double crochets right into the center piece right here. And we're gonna count those out together. So one and two, three, four, six and seven is the last one. So once you have your seven in there you simply come back down on the top and just stretch on over and you see the three single crochets are next and you put one single crochet into each and you will do that same concept going all the way across. So the next time 
you'll just reach on over and do the middle and you'll do your seven just like you've seen here. Now on the other side when you get to the other edge you only have a partial and you only see four in here. So this means that there's only gonna be four double crochets right into the top of this side only. So one, two, three, and four is your last. So I don't wanna finish this one all the way. It's my fourth one. I wanna switch back to the green. So I'm just gonna carry the green upward on the side and use the green to finish it and let that blue drop. Okay, so that you can see that it's being pulled up onto the side just like this. In other colors it's not so obvious. So uh, it depends on the color that you wish. You could always just do a border on this if that bothers you as well. So let's move along. I'm gonna show you how to do the green one more time. And you can see now that the, the circles are really starting to take shape just like so. So let's do the green one more time. We're going to start up and chain one and just like we did down here. Okay, there's only two double crochets here or sorry two single crochets and there's only ever two on this side. So you always can remember that when you're doing a single crochets on the outside there will only ever be two. Okay, there's only three when you're in the middle of the afghan. Okay, so you're gonna double uh, single crochet for the first two and then you're going to start a semicircle that has the bowl shape. So it's the underside. So to do that remember chain three, one, two, three and now let's start collecting our stitches. How many loops do you need on your hook? If you said eight, you were right. You get yourself a cookie. So just continue to collect them. So yarning over, insert, pull through, pull through two and hold. And keep doing that until you get eight. I just keep going until I feel like I have enough. And as you get used to this project, you will actually get that feeling too. And uh, you can speed yourself up with just using the force. <laughs> so here we go. So you have eight on there. So yarning over pulling through all, all of it. Okay, now let's chain three, one, two, and three. And just like before, we reach over and we single crochet to the next three. And this is the very top of that blue circle that you see. So one, two, and three. And we're gonna finish off with a partial and just like you see it's a partial down here. We're gonna finish it with a partial up here. So it's chaining three, one, two, three and now let's collect our, our last four remaining stitches. One. How did I know that there was four? Well every time you have a semicircle on the edge there will always be four. I know that from experience plus I know it from this pattern. Okay, so you will end up with a total of five loops on your hook yarning over and pulling it through all five. And then yarning over pulling it through the final just to create that center ring just like that. Let's uh, begin to do the this again. So let's turn our work and let's go back with the green. So to start up is chaining of three, one, two, three. This time we're on the over side. So there's four that you see down here. This counts as one of them. So that means that we're gonna double crochet three times to make it equal. Most people that do a pattern like this they go all wonky because they don't see the relationship of one side to the other. It's like a mirror so just picture it like a, a sunset. Okay so whatever's happening on the bottom must be on top because this is the reflection. So I have my four in there just reach on over three single crochets right into the, the next or one single crochet into the next three. Okay so just match exactly what you saw. Okay, we're now in an uh, overside. So when every time you have a full one, you just have to put seven double crochets. So one, two, three, and that's four, four, and this is five, and this is six. And seven like so. So you're gonna continue to do that. So you'll just have to reach over and do the three next single crochets and this time because we're on an edge there's only ever two. So then you're just gonna single crochet into the final two. And so remember do not finish this final one all together. You have to then carry up your blue. So on the final the last two stitches just pull through the blue and then begin to do the blue next. So just turn your work and then you can just immediately start up the blue. So basically how you see the blue uh, below is basically how you're matching it. So you see that it's a partial. So you're going to start up and let me just get you started. So it's one, two, three and you need a total of four of these spokes. 
So you're just gonna collect the next three to give you your total of four. Like so. And once you collected all those, yarn over and pull through everything. Like so. And so you're just gonna begin to go across just like you normally would have. And so you're just gonna chain three single crochets along the top. Do your underside that I've already showed you and continue that same path going all the way for this particular afghan. So that's it for now on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com. Thank you so much for enjoying this pattern. This is called the Bernat Blanket Big Wheel and it's an exclusive with Michaels and I'll provide the information for this pattern and the more information of this video. Until then, we'll see ya.